So this is the current state of my bedroom closet, which can only be described as dark and dingy. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through what I feel is the easiest way to add some simple motion-activated lighting to a closet, as well as giving the space a much needed makeover. I'll first turn on some portable studio lights so you can better see what's going on, and after that I'll begin taking off the folding doors to give me a little bit more space to work with. Next, it was time to empty out the clothes, and at least for me, I pretty much wear the same five things over and over again, so it's definitely a good time to make a donate pile. Now, my wife and I share this closet, so at least half the stuff is hers, and this is a project she's been wanting to do for a long time, so I'm glad we're finally getting to it. Once everything's out, I'll start removing the old shelf system that was here when we bought the house about six years ago. It's held up pretty good, but it was starting to sag and come off the walls a little bit more in the past 12 months, so it was definitely time to do something different. This did leave quite a few holes in the wall, so my wife went to work spackling and painting. And even though most of this will eventually be covered up behind clothes, it was a good time to freshen everything up while it was still empty. Overall, the interior was in pretty good shape, but there was some sheetrock damage right here that I wanted to try fixing. I first removed the loose pieces and cleaned up the area as best I could. Then, I got a patch kit that I placed over the damaged area, and these do come in different sizes depending on the area that needs fixing. And finally, I got some joint compound and spread it over the patch as evenly as possible. We let it dry overnight before my wife sanded everything down, including the spackling, and gave the walls a new coat of paint. Now that everything's prepped, it's time for me to move on to the next step, which is to attach some diffuser channels to the inside walls of the closet. I ended up going with some very inexpensive corner profiles that are super lightweight and will be the perfect size for the LED strips I'm going to use. It'll make a little bit more sense later on, but I'm going to want the lights to be shining at an angle into the closet, and these will be perfect for that. To install these, I'll again be using some 3M removable sticky pads. I usually put them on at a slight angle, so if I ever want to remove them without damaging the wall, I can pull on the tab that I leave slightly exposed. This is the same method that I use for my gaming setup right Right here, here, and here. That was five months ago and they haven't budged. I also used this method for my under cabinet lighting project that I did a little over a year ago and have had zero issues. But if you didn't want to do it this way, they do come with some mounting brackets that you can screw into the wall that the profiles will snap into. So right now, I'm just going to be prepping the aluminum profiles by putting two sticky pads on each one meter long section. And I'm not exactly sure how many of these profiles I'm going to need, but I'll begin by getting eight ready to go. Next, I'm going to start by installing them on the inside of the closet wall so that the light's going to be angled in towards the center. I'll bring the camera in closer for a better look. Now there's absolutely nothing scientific about my placement of these. I'm just going with my gut on what I think will provide the best illumination. And I know it's hard to tell from this view, but these are going to be about 2 inches from the edge. And once I have the vertical channels in place, I'm going to then go across the top doing the same thing with having them positioned where the light will be pointing down. Now over here where I'll be going back down, there is only about 6 inches of space from the side to the closet opening, so in my mind it made sense to install the channels right up against the inside wall. So this very well could be overkill, but I'm going to go ahead and put up some more profiles in the corner going up and then across the ceiling in hopes of really getting this area as bright as possible. And for the ceiling, the only thing I'm going to be doing differently is using a flat aluminum profile like you're seeing here. These again are extremely lightweight and should have no problem staying put with the same 3M sticky pads. Now for this section, I'm not going to go back down. I think the one that's already in the corner will be enough for this side. So a little over two months ago, I made a video going over how I installed some motion-activated staircase lighting. That video blew up and currently has over 1 million views, which is still hard to believe. Now for that build, I used Akara's new LED strips with their wireless motion sensor because of how easy it was to get everything set up, and so far I've had zero issues, which is why I'm again going to be using them for this closet project. So before getting these installed in the profiles, let's quickly go over what you need to do to get them set up to respond to motion. You're first going to need one of their hubs, which I have here. This is the M2, and once you have everything unpacked and plugged in, you can go ahead and download the Akara app. Once you're signed in, go ahead and click the plus icon near the top right and hit add accessory. Then near the bottom right, click on hub M2. The yellow light on the device should be flashing, so you can move on to the next step. And from here, you can enter in your home Wi-Fi information, give it a minute to go through the connection process, and just like that, your hub is up and running. Now for getting your LED strip connected, make sure it's plugged in and go back to the app and click the plus icon and again add accessory. 
Under the lighting section on the left, you should see the T1 listed. Next, it's going to have you choose what hub you want to assign it to, and you should see the M2 that you can select. I then held the power button down for 5 seconds, waited, and after about 10 seconds, it should alert you that the accessory was added successfully. Accessory added successfully. You can give it a name, and just like that, the LED strip is up and running. Now taking a closer look at the strip, there's a couple very important things to point out. The first is that they've included separate LEDs for a tunable white apart from the RGB pixels. Not having this, at least for me, would have been a deal breaker. Next is that these can be extended up to 10 meters in length while using only one power supply. This can be accomplished by attaching up to 8 additional 1 meter long strips they offer like you're seeing here, which can be slid into place at the end of our main unit's 2 meter long section. And finally, there are cut points every 20 centimeters if you need to further customize the length. And last but not least, you're going to need to set up the actual motion sensor. And what's awesome about these is they're completely wireless. There's no need for these to be plugged in, so you can literally place them anywhere you want with an expected battery life of 5 years. To get this connected, first remove the plastic piece on the bottom, and then on the app, hit the plus icon and then add accessory. On the left hand side, click sensor, and then find the P1. Again, select the hub you want to pair it with, and then on the back of the sensor, push and hold the button for 5 seconds, wait, and then after about 10 seconds, you'll be alerted that the motion sensor is connected. Accessory added successfully. You can give it a name, and then you're all set. Now that we've set up the lights, let's begin getting them installed into the channels. These do have some very strong 3M backing and are a perfect fit for the profiles. Right here is the beginning of the strip and where the power will eventually be. I'll make my way up to the first corner and since these can be cut and reconnected using third party connectors or soldering, you could go that route. But you could also do what I'm doing here and just bend them slightly and it's going to work just as well. I'll continue to make my way across, do another bend at the end, and then down the corner section. This will be the end of my first strip in which I used a total of 6 meters. Going back to the other side, I'll be starting another run up the wall for our second section of channels. This will be the exact same process as we just did, but for this part, I ended up using a little over 4 meters to go up and across the ceiling. Now with the way we installed everything, from the outside looking in like you're seeing now, nothing should be visible as far as what we just did, and so far I'm very happy with how things are coming along. But there's a lot more work to do, and next on the list was trying to figure out what to do for the actual closet organization system. I ended up going with modular closets that I found on Amazon. This company by far had the most options to choose from, as well as the best reviews, and they're made right here in the US, which is rare to see these days. I decided to go with two of their basic shelf units, and two of their shelves with built-in drawers and rack. Now it took about 4 days to arrive, and as I'm getting the first kit unpacked, I can officially say I'm at the point in my life where I've put so many things together over the years that I no longer dread the assembly process. But if you're someone that still does, rest assured that these were about as easy as it can possibly be to put together. I'll quickly speed through this process in case you're curious on what's involved, but this one, which is their basic shelf unit, took about 15 minutes to assemble, and to make things easier to move around and lift, I'll hold off on inserting the adjustable shelf dividers until the end. Now this kit is their shelf unit with drawers and a hanging rack. It was more of the same, but did take a little bit longer being that I had to put the drawers together. My guess, it ended up taking about 25 minutes for this one. I'll again speed through if you want to see how it comes together. So now that we have the shelving assembled, I'm going to go ahead and start to mount them on the wall. And they do make tools that you can use to help lift things, but I'll just be using a bench to my kids coloring table to help out. I'll then use my new Franklin stud finder to locate the 2x4s behind the sheetrock. And since I do have the 19.5 inch modules, I'm only going to be hitting one stud on most of these, which should be just fine. 
And since the corners in this closet are pretty bad, you can see how the right side isn't flush against the wall. I'll go over what you can do later on in this video if you're having the same issue. Here I'll be drilling a pilot hole where we marked our stud. I'll also do another pilot hole to the left for a screw that will only be going into the drywall. I'll then move down and do the same. And finally, we can use the included screws to secure them to the wall. Now it's just a matter of doing the same thing for our three remaining modules while trying to keep everything as level as possible for best results. So more than likely, the units aren't going to be perfectly flush with one another, so if the little space between each is bothersome, you can use one and a quarter inch screws to secure them together. I'll first be using some clamps to bring them closer, then drilling a pilot hole, and then the screws. It's not that much extra work, but it definitely makes it look better versus doing nothing. Next, I'll be turning my attention to the gap on the side right here, and this very well could be something that wouldn't bother a lot of people, but if it does, here's a very easy fix. I'm going to use some double-sided tape that's worked out great in past projects. I'll be securing the strip down the right side of the cabinet's edge. Then I got an 8-foot long piece of white molding trim for about $3 that I cut down to size that'll close up the gap perfectly. So as of right now, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be putting the doors back on. I kind of like the open look, but very well could change my mind later. And like I mentioned before, since the motion sensor is completely wireless, you can put it anywhere you want to get the results you're looking for. I ended up putting it on the inside wall and high enough up so that if I keep the doors off, it's not going to trigger the lights if someone is simply walking by. I only want the lights to turn on when someone is clearly going up to the closet, and the placement right here is the perfect spot. So one quick thing I wanted to mention is that I thought it would be a little bit too cramped to add another module in this back left corner, so I kept the space open where I plan to put up some hooks to store a few off-season jackets that'll free up some space in our downstairs coat closet. Now that we're getting close to the end and so far everything's looking good, I'll go ahead and finish putting the remaining shelves in, and since there are many spots for the pegs to go, these can be installed at different heights if you want. Next up, we have to address the power situation. Now some of you may be fortunate enough to have an outlet in your closet, but I don't. And since I didn't want to pay the $1400 I was quoted to add one, it was time for me to get creative. I'm going to be using pretty much the same method I went over in a video I put together recently on how you can better hide wires that you can check out for a more complete breakdown. But essentially, I'm going to be shoving everything into this little decorative bathroom box, use some 3M sticky pads to mount it to the wall, and then comes the fun part. I got a 30 foot extension cord and some very small cable concealer tracks that'll be running along the baseboards out of the closet, around the corner, up and over the door, back down, and along the wall to the closest outlet. Is it a perfect solution? No, but it is out of sight enough to where it's not going to bother me and it did get the wife's approval, so in the end that's really all that matters. So the last thing we need to do before getting to the final results is to make sure we tell the app what needs to happen when motion is detected, and this might be my favorite part because of how easy it is to set up. First, click on the automation, and here you'll see the ones I've already done for my motion activated stairs. But for the closet, we're going to click on the plus icon in the top right. From here, we're presented with a simple if-then screen, which I'll be clicking on add under if. You can go down and find the motion sensor that I walked you through how to add, which I've named Bedroom Closet. I'm then going to choose Motion is Detected. Now I need to decide what should happen if motion is detected by the bedroom sensor, and to do this I'll click Add under Then. I'm going to select the LED strip that we just added that I named Bedroom Closet, and then choose Set Color Temperature and Brightness. I'm first going to set things to turn on at full brightness using the slider, and then I'll choose the Cool White option, which is at the bottom of the inner circle, and then hit Done, and then hit Save. Now what I just did with a few clicks is set things up for when motion is detected by the bedroom closet sensor, the lights will automatically turn on to cool white at 100%. Next, I'm going to go back in and do one more if-then to say if no motion is detected after one minute, the lights will turn off. I'll do a quick test here so you can see just how fast the response time is from when it detects movement to the time the lights turn on. So 
So we're finally ready to see if all our hard work has paid off. In this example, I still have all my big studio lights on, and I'm first going to make sure that walking by the closet area doesn't trigger the lights to turn on, as well as opening and closing the door. And so far, so good. Next, I'm going to try walking up to the closet, and as I get closer, I'm hoping the lights will turn on as soon as I get about one foot away from the opening. And as you can see, it did work flawlessly. Now it is a little hard to see the major differences with the studio lights on, so for this next example I'm going to turn off those big lights and keep our one and only overhead light in the room turned on. And here you can clearly see just how big of a difference the lights we added to the closet are actually making. It goes from extremely dark and dingy to bright and vibrant with having to do absolutely nothing other than walking up to the closet. For our next test I'm going to turn off the overhead light so that the only light coming into the room is a little early evening sun slightly visible from a couple windows. And as you would hope, the closet area is lit up to the point where I'll probably set them to automatically turn on at a lower brightness come evening time. Next I'll wait until nighttime where there's no light just to make sure the motion sensor still works in a pitch black environment, which thankfully it still does. And finally, even though it's something I don't see myself using, it's still fun to play around with the color effects to appreciate how cool indirect lighting can be, which means you're not looking directly at the light source, but instead seeing it reflect off of, in this case, the cabinets and back wall. So that about does it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you've been wanting to do something similar to your closet or pantry, maybe, at the very least, this will give you some ideas you can incorporate into your project. Thank you all for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day.